Hi everyone, I just took a picture of an exotic object, unique among all of the pictures I've ever taken. It's a picture of a bow shock from a pulsar, and that should give you some hint as to how strange and wonderful this astrophysical object actually is. This is the only, as far as I know, color picture of it, and it is truly rare astrophysics that have been captured here. Not only will you be able to see it, but you'll also see its motion through space. Many things move around through time, and here I have imagery which shows the motion not only of the pulsar, but the entire bow shock, the nebula, moving through space over the course of 30 years. And as hyperbolic as my introduction already is, the story behind how it formed, how it moves through space, what its shape is, all of it is extreme and at the frontier of astrophysics, and I'd like to show you all about it. So join me in this video, and let me show you how cool a pulsar and its bow shock can be. I'd like to begin by showing you the image first. No great reveal at the end. The reason is because there is this huge dichotomy between the subtle red glow that you see near the middle of this image and what it all means when put into context. It has this staggering numbers of time, energy, speed, and many other attributes that I'm going to be describing. Let's begin by taking in what we see in this picture. Of course, we have the very faint red glow, and this is what I'll be talking about. That is the bow shock of this pulsar. We also have other stars that are part of our own galaxy in the foreground, and then far more numerous than them are other galaxies far, far away. On the left, we can see a relatively bright spiral galaxy. It might be a few hundred million light years away, and then below it are some other galaxies that are apparently crashing into one another. And even smaller galaxies, although they're not really smaller, they're just farther away. Certainly, many of the galaxies in this field are truly billions of light years away. We are looking into the vastness of space in a view like this. The pulsar and its bow shock is only 500 light years away. It is one of the closest things in this field of view. The star that appears near the apex of the bow shock is actually a binary system of the pulsar and a white dwarf. Each individually are already astrophysical extremes as far as stellar evolution is concerned, and yet we have two together here. Their history and how that came to be is truly fascinating. The story begins no less than 10 billion years ago when there were two stars together orbiting each other. One was a star like our own sun, similar kind of mass, and the other was extremely massive, at least 10 times the mass of our own sun. It's that massive star that really drives the story because it lived for a very short life, perhaps only a few million years before it blew up as a supernova explosion. Unfortunately, I don't have a graphics department to show you that element of this story. But what is remarkable is that the other companion star, the normal star, it survived the event. The supernova explosion left behind one of the most bizarre objects in the universe, a neutron star. This small piece of a star, now only a former fraction of its whole, 1.4 solar masses, continues to orbit with the other normal star. These two stars danced in the dark for billions of years, and not much happened until the normal star got old. A sun-like star, like our own sun, doesn't end its life by blowing up as a supernova. Instead, they become bloated red giants with extended outer atmospheres. So large, in fact, that some of that mass, some of that gas, is transferred to the nearby neutron star. It falls in on it. The neutron star is about the same mass as the sun, but it's only something like 20 kilometers in size. I'm sure you've seen images of the sun compared to the Earth. Well, this object is about the size of a city, pick any one you want, on the Earth. Just think about that for a moment. Take the mass of the entire sun and squish it down to the size of a city. 
But wait, it gets even more incredible because the gas that's falling in on the neutron star is also transferring angular momentum. It is making the neutron star spin faster and faster. Eventually, it'll be spinning at a rate of 178 rotations per second. That's one rotation every five milliseconds. Having been spun up, the neutron star is now sending out a beam of energy that can be detected in the radio wavelengths. That's why it's called a pulsar, and this particular one was discovered in 1993 during a survey specifically designed to try to find pulsars in the sky. So now you know what we're looking at. All the action takes place right there. There's a white dwarf and a pulsar orbiting each other, but we only see the white dwarf, which is a 20th magnitude looking star. The very dim red glow is the bow shock caused by the pulsar and its motion through the interstellar medium, that is, the rarefied hydrogen gas atoms that exist between the stars of our galaxy. And it is very faint, so faint in fact, that I spent more than 50 hours worth of time trying to collect enough light just to show you this. There are, to my knowledge, no other nice colored pictures of this particular object. Even from one of the darkest sites in the world, the sky, its natural brightness, is actually too bright to see this through normal broadband filters. I had to expose for most of the time using a special filter, which only lets this red light come through and allow me to detect the bow shock of the pulsar. As I mentioned earlier, the pulsar and its bow shock is moving through the interstellar medium. You can see now, for the first time, its motion through space. I'm comparing an image taken 30 years ago in 1995 with my image of this year. You can see not only does the pulsar and white dwarf system move down and to the left, but the entire bow shock is moving along with it. And that really is a unique kind of situation to be able to observe in the sky. The bow shock is a three-dimensional structure that astronomers have gone to great lengths to model. Here is a plot from a recent paper which does exactly that. However, I found this particular plot very difficult to visualize. What's happening is the entire bow shock and pulsar system is moving to the left and actually slightly away from us. That's what the plot intends to show, but I didn't think it did so clearly. So I went ahead and programmed my own version of a hyperboloid, which is the shape that's shown there, and then I can overlay that to show you exactly what it looks like. Now the final takeaway about the image is the mystery behind why we see it at all. We're not actually looking at gas colliding or anything that is becoming hot, nothing like that at all. We're looking at the ghostly glow of hydrogen atoms that are being affected by magnetic and electric fields. It's crazy. So what's happening is the pulsar is emitting a wind of electrons, basically. And they set up fairly strong magnetic and electric fields in the area. It's those fields which are pressing against the interstellar medium as it moves through space. That's actually what's defining the bow shock. So from the pulsar's perspective, what you have is coming from the left on the screen, say, you have neutral hydrogen atoms which are passing into the region. Because they're neutral, they're not affected by these uh, magnetic or electric fields. However, when they enter the region uh, that has a lot more of this energy, a lot more of these electrons moving around inside that shocked region, then they will be slightly excited by the passage or collision of electrons and protons. The electrons of this neutral hydrogen get elevated, and then they relax back down, and that emits this particular light that we see. It is a kind of very special plasma physics that takes place in the environs of a pulsar. This is a very special glow that you're looking at, and I am so happy that I had an opportunity to show you what it looks like.